morning or good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're at. Zany J here. And today, or this morning or whatever, I'm I'm focusing on something that's really important and something a lot of people aren't seeing. You know, when you get a lot of people go to church and these pre, a lot of these ministers they want to tout what they call tithing, quote unquote, and giving money and offerings and stuff. You know, it's not really what it's supposed to, what it was meant to be. And it was under the law of Moses and the law of the Levites, which was always food. Some people take time to actually read that. Now bear with me. Okay. Now it says here in Matthew 15... Verses five, 3 through 9. This is Jesus, what he said. People say, well, it's not red words. Well, it doesn't matter. Jesus still said this. The Lord still said this. He said, Jesus replied, And why do you, by your traditions, violate the direct commandments of God? For instance, God says, Honor your father and mother, and anyone who speaks evil of father or mother must be put to death. But you say, you don't need to honor your parents by caring for their needs if you give them money to God instead. And, and pay attention to this. And so by your own tradition, you nullify the direct commandment of God. You hypocrites! Isaiah was prophesying about you when he said, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away. Their worship is a farce, for they replace God's commands with their own man-made teachings. And so many, you know, preachers, they, they, they want to tell it. we got to follow God's commandments, you got to do this and do this. Christ went to the cross to fulfill the requirements so that those that believe in Him would not have to. They are right with God. It says it all through the New Testament, even in the book of Acts. Giving money, money to God is man-made teaching. Now, I understand churches, you know, the building, keep the buildings open and keep the bills paid or whatever, but the thing is, they should call it what it is. You know, call, call a kettle a kettle. You know, just be honest about it. And stop trying to get rich off of people by saying, oh yeah, yeah, you, you got to do this, da, 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 God won't bless you. They're, they're nullifying not only the commandments of God in, under the law, but they're also trying to, they're, they're saying that what Jesus did wasn't enough. That you had, well, see, they, they cherry pick stuff. They cherry pick stuff. You know, it's right there in Matthew 15. You know, look it up. Or you can read it right here. And as it says in the book of Malachi, Your whole nation has been cheating me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Tithes were always livestock, produce, and flocks. It was never, ever money. So there will be enough food, underlying food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord Almighty, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it all in. Try it. Let me prove it to you. Your crops will be abundant. And not everybody's a farmer. It's just, and, and a lot of preachers try to say, Oh, well, that can, that, that can mean this and this. No, 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 no. It says it right here. This is God being specific. For I will... Guard them from insects and disease. That's pretty specific. Your grapes will not show well before their time, before they are ripe, says the Lord Almighty. But all nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord Almighty. You have served terrible things about me, says the Lord, but you say, What do you mean? How have we spoken against you? You have said, What's the use of serving God? What have we gained by obeying his commands or by trying to show the Lord Almighty that we? are sorry for our sins. From now on we will say, Blessed are the arrogant, for they, those who do evil get rich. And those who dare God to punish them go free of harm. And that's interesting how it says that. You know, if preachers want to be specific and try to use this, you know, and say, oh yeah, 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 it, you, you, gotta, you gotta give, you know, bring your tithes. And tithing was always food. It was never money. And it correlates with what Jesus said. This is under the Levitical priesthood, and yet, Preachers, they use it to get rich off of people, and they use coercion. You know, it's right here.
Yeah, here's the, you know, they like to tell, you know, Ananias and Sapphira, Sapphira, how they lied. They, you know, they were going to give part of the property. They lied to the Holy Spirit, and people say, well, oh, God killed them because they didn't give their money away. You know, a lot of them try to, try to tout that. And if you read it in context, okay, Ananias and Sapphira. There was also a man named Ananias who, with his wife, Sapphira, Sapphira sold some property. He brought part of the money... The Apostles. This is in Acts chapter 5, by the way. But he claimed it was the full amount. His wife had agreed to this deception. And Peter said to Ananias, Why has Satan filled your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit, and you kept some of the money for yourself. And they tried, the preachers tried to say, yeah, I'll see you right there. You know, you're, you're not giving all for God. You know, oh, oh, oh. remember Ananias and Sevilla? <laughs> see, but see, they, they only read the cherry pick. The property was yours to sell or not sell as you wished, and after selling it, the money was yours to give away. The preacher's saying, well, the money is God's money to begin with. Well, it says right here is, you know, it's the person's money, you know, and after, and moving on, and after selling it, the money was yours to give away. How could you do a thing like this? You weren't lying to us, but to God. As soon as Ananias heard these words, he fell to the floor and died. And a lot of, you know, a lot of preachers try to think, "Oh, you're not giving all your money to God." You know, see, and they, they, you know, you got to give your money. You know, you got to be all in and all this. And it's like, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> it's a man-made teaching. You know, giving money to God. Well, I, again, I understand. You know, churches need money and stuff to like keep the doors open. But I mean, you know. Don't, a lot of them don't even have regular jobs because they take advantage of people, you know. It's just now some preachers do have a regular job. Like this one works works um, three jobs because he doesn't because he you know pays attention to this stuff and realizes, hey, you know, this is you know it's a it's a deception to get rich off of people. Here's another interesting one. <laughs> A lot of people say Jesus was commending this this poor widow. Mark chapter 12, verse 41. I'm going to go back up to verse 37. These are Jesus' words. Since David, Jesus said, the Lord says, Since David himself called him Lord, how can he be his son at the same time? You know, here in the crowd listened to it, and with great interest. I'm moving down past that a little bit. Ah, uh, yes. Um, here are some of the other things that Jesus taught them at this time. Beware of these teachers of religious law, for they love to parade in flowing robes and to have everyone bow to them as they walk in the marketplaces, and how they love the seats of honor in the synagogues and at banquets. But they sh and, and pay attention, folks, those of you who, who are born with me this far. They shamelessly cheat widows out of their property and then to cover up the kind of people they really are, they make long prayers in public. Because of this, their punishment will be the greater. And it's funny, just a few moments later, it's like Jesus was setting up the scene. He was setting this up because he knew the widow, and that very widow was coming over that he was talking about, or widows in general. Right here, the widow's offering. Verse 41. Jesus went over to the collection box in the temple and sat and watched as the crowds dropped in their money. So, said, well, that shows right there. We're supposed to give money. Na -na 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 -na. You know, many rich people put in large amounts. Then a poor widow came in. And this is a man-made teaching. As Jesus said, it was a man-made teaching. You know, then a poor widow came and dropped in two pennies. And I understand back in the day the temple needed to be upkept, but it's supposed to be taken out, you know, from taxes and whatever, not not from gifts in their offering or whatever. Many rich people put in large amounts. Then a poor widow came and dropped in two pennies. He called his disciples to him and said, I assure you, this poor widow has given more than all 
the others have given, for they gave a tiny part of their surplus, but she, being poor as she is, has given everything she had. has. See, that makes it sound like God wants, wants people to be poor, and that Jesus is commending that. No, he's not. They've gotten, peop they've gotten people so mix mixed up into thinking, oh, you're supposed to do because God wants you to give your money to, the, to him and stuff, and he doesn't. I understand, you know, like back in those days, but the temple was supposed to be taken out of the taxes, taken out of the money in the treasury from taxes. It wasn't supposed to be taken from people where they get cheated. And Jesus had just talked about how widows were cheated. And there's an example, they get cheated. Well, this is what God wants you to do. No, it's not. He doesn't want people to be poor at all. And I understand, you know, churches need, to, need money to stay open, but, you know, call it what it is. Call a spade a spade. You know, tell, you know, we need, you know, you know, we need to, we all, the congregation needs to pitch in, you know, to help out, to keep the building open. You know, if we're to have meetings here, and just be honest about it. Because what it is, these preachers are, are like, well, if we do that, they're not going to want to, they're not going to want to do it. Oh, no, we're not going to do it. Oh, you know, so we got, we got to make it, we got to, we got to, we got to, we got to make them feel guilty. We got to make them feel like, well, you better do this or something bad will happen to you. And it says right here, that's not the case. You know, even Jesus, the Lord, was talking about how, you know, how they were, you know, man-made teachings like I discussed earlier. You know, money, giving money to God is a man-made teaching. I'm sorry, folks. And this, this giving, you know, ministry, that was Titus's idea. And it's good to give to help. That's what God wants you to help people who are less fortunate than you. It's like in the story of the Good Samaritan, what Jesus said, you know, <clears throat> do like the Good Samaritan. But these days it's so misconstrued. Well, I need I need sixty-five million dollars for a jet. Oh, the Lord's blessed me with so much, yeah, because those preachers have been twisting the word and getting rich off of people. They've been speaking the truth as far as about Jesus, but then they've been taking the Old Testament scriptures and mingling them with the New Testament to get rich off of people. I mean, you read it yourself, folks, and you can go back and you can you can read it yourself. This is in the Bible. It's it's misconstrued. I don't know why people aren't seeing why people aren't seeing this because they're being they're being manipulated and lied to. A lot of these preachers are hearing from lying spirits. You know, they're saying, you know, oh, I have a word from the Lord. You know, not necessarily. And, you know, there are false prophets these days too, because the Bible talks about false prophets. And I'll show you something else. It's in the First Peter, I believe. Hold on. Leaving it's uh, 16 through, yeah, 16 through, through um, 8. And this is why a lot of preachers like to screw people up. This is called a generous giving. Okay, now bear with me on this. Now I want to tell you, dear brothers and sisters, what God in His kindness has done for the churches in Macedonia. Though they have been going through much trouble and hard times, the wonderful joy and deep poverty have overflowed in rich generosity. See, that makes it sound like, you know, God wants people to be poor and in poverty. And it's not true. Because if that were true, why aren't these preachers in poverty? Think about it. It overflowed in rich generosity. For I can testify that they gave not only what they could afford, but far more. And they did it all of their own free will. You don't see many preachers doing that. They begged us again and again for the gracious privilege of sharing in the gift for the Christians in Jerusalem. Right there. Let me stop right there. It was supposed to be, you know, helping the Christians and the poor people, not to make some preacher rich and say it's for the work of God. If that's true, then why do many of these churches want people go on mission to go on mission trips? But they tell those people that they're sending on mission trips, well, you have to fund the mission trip yourself. What about all that money they're taking from those people in their congregation that they're sending on mission trips? What about all that money? Well, if they use that money to do the Lord's work like they say it's for, and use it to finance the mission trips, well, they don't want to not have money to buy that, that nice two or three cars in those big old houses they live in. Oh, look how the Lord has blessed me. No, that's not the Lord blessing them. That's them twisting scriptures to get rich off of people. You're reading it right here. I'm, I'm reading it to you and showing it to you. 
take the time to actually read it yourself. Continuing on. They begged us again and again for the gracious privilege of sharing in the gift for the Christians in Jerusalem. Best of all, they went beyond our highest hopes for their first action was to dedicate themselves to the Lord and to us for whatever directions God might give them. You know, it's, it's, you know, and they try to say, well, this is what God wants. Okay. It's to get, like, again, it's to give to help, it was to give to help the poor people, which is what God wants you to do, help people that are less fortunate. Moving on. So we urge Titus, who encouraged your giving in the first place, Titus is the one that started all this giving of money to help the poor, take up the collection to help the poor. And that's got so misconstrued and discombobulated and twisted around. And they, they've, they've woven that in. Oh, you just tithe your money. You know, it's not even what it was supposed to be. They use that to coerce people and guilt people and say, well, you better do this or God's not going to bless you. You know, it's just, it's so twisted. To return to you and encourage you to complete your share in the ministry of giving. And that was for, to give to help the poor. Since you, and he's the one that gave them an idea. It didn't say that God directly told them to do that. Since you excel in so many ways, you have so much faith. Let's see. They such gifted speakers with knowledge, such enthusiasm, and such love for us. And I want you to excel, you to excel also in this gracious ministry of giving. You know that to me, that's something Titus came up with, and Satan uses that to manipulate people these days, and let's cause them to be cheated by churches. You know, it's good to give money to help people. Not to build, not to build another addition to a church or a parking lot, a new parking lot. You know that money really is, as preachers say, to do the work of the Lord. And why don't they take that money that they're taking from the congregation and use it to fund those mission trips? I mean, come on. Like I said, whoever whoever wants to watch this video, you can watch it. You know, it's for it's, this video is for those who are actually interested in checking this out. It'll take the time to read it. Okay? Because this is important that people understand this. Giving money to God is always a man-made teaching. It is good to help people. You know, and this gets, you know, and they say, well, it's God that said this. But it says Titus is the one who encouraged your giving. So that was actually his idea. And I say it's good to help people, but it, today, these days, it's the modern Western civilization has been construed to, you know, be designed for preachers to get rich off of people and say, well, it's God's will, you know, you to give us money and blah, 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 tithing, and it's like it's not even that at all. It's been twisted. That's how Satan works. And I want to show you something else that Jesus said. Yeah, here we are. Second Peter, verse uh, chapter chapter two. Yeah, and pay attention, okay? <laughs> the danger of false teachers, but there were also false prophets in Israel, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will cleverly teach their destructive heresies about God, and even turn against their master who bought them. Theirs will be a swift and terrible end. Many will follow their evil teaching and shameful immorality. And because of them, Christ and His true way will be slandered. Yep. In their greed, they will make up clever lies to get a hold of your money. Ding, 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 ding! But God condemned them long ago, and the destruction is on the way. Now, I'm, I'm not saying I'm perfect or whatever, but what they're doing, and this is what's happening now these days, it's, it's scripture's been twisted and misconstrued to get hold of people's money. I've showed you examples. If you care to read them, if you care to take the time to read them, 
do so on your own. If you don't believe I'm actually reading the Bible here, because I am. But yeah. Like I said, you know, I understand churches, these buildings they call churches, need money to stay open. You know, as I said, be honest about it. These preachers need to be honest because if they were actually honest about it, they would they they would they would close real quick because people wouldn't want to give money because people wouldn't feel coerced. So if we don't give money, we're going to be in trouble. Oh, God's going to be mad at us. Yeah, these are the same preachers that want to preach the next Sunday. If God is not mad at you. Blah, blah, blah. You know, and they're they're. They're keeping people on a slippery slope. You know, they're keeping people, like, reined in. You know, just like, oh, you know, we got to keep just right. We can't drive them away with the truth, but we can't let we can't let that money get away either. You know, that's the way a lot of them are. Most of them are. You know, not all of them. I said, you know, churches need to stay open. You know, I understand that, you know, for people to meet, but you know, I should be honest. Say, hey, you know, this, if we're going to get this place open, we need to, like, have a you know, a pool where we can actually chip in some money. Because we're all coming here to meet, so we should all, like, chip in a little money, those of us who can, to keep the bills paid. That's being honest about it. Because they know if they, they're they afraid if they do that, well, if people won't come, then we'll be closed down. Oh, oh you know, we won't, we won't make, we'll have to work, we won't, we'll have to work regular jobs, you know, we won't be getting money from them, you know, finance our lifestyle. And that's basically what it is, it's a business. You know, and back in those days, you know, they, they took up collections, like I said, to help the poor, help the Christians, you know, the poor Christians and just the poor in general. People back in those days, they met in people's homes and stuff for church. They didn't go around like, you know, oh, we got to give you money, you know, no, 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 you know, it's, they, they've twisted it. It's right here in God's word. Okay. Let's make God look so bad. It makes him look so bad. So many times I've gotten so mad and I've said things in anger because of this wrong teaching, the wrong teaching. And I've said men angry things toward God, you know, and about God, you know, in, in private. And I was like, just an ang angry moment. And they didn't really mean those things. It's just because of these false teachings that have, got, have messed with my head. And I'm like, I'm trying to show that, you know, it's false. The stuff, the stuff that they're teaching is the twisting of Scripture right here. Like I said, Jesus talks about it and so does Peter. You know, and I showed you Malachi, you know, and then, you know, like I said, a lot of people want to can, can, oh, well, Jesus was committing the poor widow. No, he wasn't. He was showing an example of how she, the poor widows are getting cheated. You know, by man-made traditions. I understand the temple needed to be upkept and whatever, but that was, the offerings were always, were never meant to be money. They're always meant to be, you know, livestock, produce, and flocks, and things like that. And the, the, the money was supposed to be taken out of the taxes to keep the temple up, not, not just people giving every thread cent they have, you know. But that was back under the law, you know. And Christians, believers, are no longer under the law, you know. So there you have it. said, so read these things for yourselves, you know. For those of you who have stuck through with me through this video... Just to me go on about this. Thank you. You know, I appreciate it. And as always, everyone listening, everyone, every, everyone watching, everybody, stay blessed, stay safe, stay healthy, stay at peace, stay true to yourselves. Don't be a doormat. Don't treat others like doormats. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Love each other as Christ loved you. you know, it's right here, it's what Jesus said. In the name of Jesus, I, w I wish well for you all. Peace. Bye.